had it somewhere. Yeah, this happened to me with my Grammy ticket. Did I drop it? I did, I think I dropped it. Uh, I have to say while I'm stalling, um, Sri, uh, don't take this the wrong way, but what's with all the South Indians? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, and I'll tell this one joke since it seems relevant right now. Um, do you know the three degrees of egotism? I, Ayer, and Iyengar. <laughs> and that, I didn't make that up, so. Anyway, found my speech. <laughs> I'm so deeply honored by this very special recognition. It's one thing to set out, find a niche in the world, try to do good work, and reap whatever rewards may come. It's probably safe to say that we're all strivers here, so that narrative is nothing alien to us. In fact, to some extent, perhaps it defines us But to then be embraced and celebrated by the very community that raised me, however far afield I may have wandered on life's path, to be singled out as an exemplar by my own exemplars, to be rewarded by the South Asian American family essentially just for being myself, it's a truly exceptional feeling. It's a homecoming. It's a hero's welcome. I'm realizing tonight that at some deep emotional level, it's something I've always craved. However much I might believe that I've reinvented myself, I think I might have always wanted to be accepted by the people who knew me when. To extend the family metaphor, when you become an adult, you want your parents to see you as an adult and to conveniently forget about all the years and tears and dollars expended turning you into one. And then when you become a parent, you see what the project of making a person entails, and you realize how much every detail matters. And you start to see your entire life all as one breath. And that's what I've come to realize about my own relationship to our community, the larger family that made me who and what I am. But there is no before and after. There is no distinction between life in our community and life outside of it. When I step out into the streets of New York and when I travel around the world as a performer, I'm still that person that you made me into. What I've strived for in music is to represent that dynamic and to let it resound. That dialogue and that convergence between inside and outside that interleaving of home and world. I'm so happy that the work I do is getting heard at all by our community, but to be honest, it's not so important to me that you buy or even like my music. What matters more to me is that I might inspire others in our burgeoning family to take their own risks, to improvise in their own milieus, and to carve out paths where they didn't previously exist. To me, if we want to use the word jazz, that's what it must represent. Not a style of music, but a history. The story of a community of color on America's periphery, taking risks, dreaming the impossible, improvising something into existence against all odds, and changing the world. I didn't have any grand intentions when I started banging on my sister's piano as a child. But I strongly believe that an atmosphere of improvisation pervaded the earliest years of our community's existence. And it's not a stretch to say that I learned to improvise from my parents. They were the pioneers, the ones who discovered America for my sister and me. So I thank my mother and father, Sita and Raghu, for teaching me to improvise how to respond to necessity. 
I want to thank the person who perhaps influenced my childhood most directly and most deeply, my sister, Pratima Raghunathan, who's much smarter than I am and who couldn't be here tonight because she's busy battling epidemics in Africa as country director in Rwanda for the Center for Disease Control. You guys should give her an award sometime. <laughs> I want to thank my dear wife, Dr. Christina Leslie, who is a pioneering computer scientist, a supportive, um, I, almost, I almost wrote long suffering, but I scratched that out, supportive partner who remains strong through all of my time away, a loving mother, mother to our wonderful daughter, Jayanti, and a proud Desi whose great grandfather worked alongside Gandhi in South Africa. So you can give her an award, too. <laughs> I thank Jayanti for her inexhaustible joy and brilliance and for her patience through my absences. Darling, you inspire me to make this world a better place for you. I want to thank the many uh, composer performers who have nurtured and inspired me and provided me with crucial opportunities to become a better artist. George Lewis, Mia Masaoka, Steve Coleman, David Wessel, Butch Morris, Amiri Baraka, Roscoe Mitchell, Wadada Leo Smith. I want to thank all of my collaborators, most of all my dear friend and ally, saxophonist, composer, Rudresh Mahanthapa, without whom, <laughs> without him, my life in music might have been a lot more work and a lot less hilarious. He's a funny guy. You should give him an award, too. <laughs> uh, what can I say? I'm surrounded by brilliant people. In closing, I want to say that I can't remember a time when India Abroad wasn't in my family's mailbox. My parents must have counted among its first subscribers, beginning in the year before I was born. The publication was one of my first links to our heritage and our extended family and the world beyond Fairport, New York, where I grew up, long before the internet brought us all so much closer together. So I want to thank you, the publishers of India Abroad, for, recur for providing that recurring refrain, that weekly riff that has anchored our community's great decades-long improvisation in America. This is a song that will never end. Thank you.